Yeah. I like that shit right there. That is a nice, nice, nice way to intro the special I Am Rappaport podcast. Live from New York City. I'm by my window. You might hear the traffic of Manhattan. Kept the window open so you could feel it. I'm here in New York. I spent a lot of time in Los Angeles over the last, shit, 23 years. Back and forth from New York, back and forth from New York. But the reality is, I have a fucking California driver's license. That's the reality, okay? So I'm in Los Angeles a lot. My kids are in Los Angeles. My mother and father are in New York. Most of my work for the last 20-something years has been in Los Angeles, Well, that's just what they they say. They say you got to move out to Los Angeles. So when I was younger, I moved out there. Anyway, last night I got to experience a fantastic New York night. And I'm going to be honest. I I have missed a lot of of shit, a lot of New York moments. You know, even in a sick, weird way, the terrible things that have happened in New York, 9-11, the blackout in, in Manhattan, I don't know what year that was. 10, 10 years ago, 11 years ago, 12 years ago, maybe 8 years ago, 9 years ago. I don't fucking know, but there was a blackout during the summer. I always felt in a weird way jealous that I wasn't there to experience some of even the lows. Of course, the highs, the, the great sport events, the, just the, the, all the 9-11 tributes, the opening of the, the, the New World Trade Center buildings, Freedom Tower. There's just been so many. Fucking, you know, parades when, when, the, when, the, when the Yankees have won. All sorts of shit. When the blackout happened in New York and I was in Los Angeles. These are New York moments. But last night, I got to experience a New York moment that I always, I fucking, these, I see these things on the news, on the internet. And, t- and I'm like, God damn it, I'm in California. So I was at this Global Citizen Festival I believe this was on MSNBC and CNN. They showed the concert. It's to basically help world poverty. So it's a great event. Thousands. I don't know how. One cop said 300,000 people. Another one said 500. Another cop said 50,000. I don't know how many motherfucking people were in this, at this concert in Central Park, but it was a lot of motherfuckers. And it was a great day. Perfect weather. I got a... Uh, Hooked up passes from the roots. Hooked me up, although I got there at the very tail end of their performance. And then there was all kind of finagling. Because when you get to one of these big concerts, it doesn't matter who you are, what kind of fucking pass you have or laminate you have. I never have the, 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 the right one. I'm always the one that's like, you kind of got a good laminate. You kind of have a good pass, these fucking wristbands, but it's not the best one. And the ego takes over, and you're like, well, I just saw so-and-so, and they're at a, they have a good, good seats, and I see them meandering around with a glass of wine in their hand or a lemonade or an Arnold Palmer or whatever the fuck, and I got shit. I don't even have a, a bottle of water, so I want to go where they're going. So you got to finagle. You got to hustle your way to where they are, to get that Arnold Palmer. By the way, the Drink Arnold Palmer, I want to start a campaign for the Drink Arnold Palmer to now be called Tiger Woods. Okay, if you're not familiar with this drink, an Arnold Palmer is half lemonade, half iced tea. Arnold Palmer is as white as a fucking sheet of paper. You don't get any more white than Arnold Palmer. The actual guy. Tiger Woods... Half black, half Asian. Half lemonade, half iced tea. You understand what I'm saying? Arnold Palmer, just lemonade. Tiger Woods, half black, half Chinese. Half lemonade, half iced tea. So I always order a Tiger Woods when I go to like at a cafe or get a drink or whatever. Because I, I, I'm not an alcohol person. My favorite drink is the Arnold Palmer, a.k.a. the Tiger Woods. Anyway, that's a whole other segment. I'm going to put, a, put in a, a campaign to try to get that drink officially changed to be called the Tiger Woods. Arnold Palmer, you might have invented it. I don't know, but you're out. 
You're fucking out. So we get to this concert. It's beautiful weather. It's, I don't know, a million people there, 100,000 people. It's a lot of fucking people there. New York. So I, I'm in a good area, but not the best area. Me and my friend Toby and our other friend, we're fucking, I, you know, I see somebody, yo, I need to go where they're going. So these two, there was a lot of diplomats there because it was a, it was a, a worldwide event. There was diplomats, there was, you know, world leaders, all kind of people. So there was a lot of undercover sort of Secret Service type policemen. And fortunately... I was in a film called Copland, and I think every single policeman in the world, but every single policeman from the New York tri-state area has seen this movie Copland, and fortunately, they like the movie, and, they, and a lot of times, they'll recognize me from Copland, and they will actually acknowledge me as my character's name in that movie. And the only reason why I remember the character's name from the movie is because I get called it pretty much at least once a day when I'm in New York. Murray Superboy Babbage. So I get cops yelling at me all day. Superboy, Superboy, Superboy. Yo, you were in Copland. Yo, Superboy, Superboy. Which is fucking great. It's never annoying. Especially if you're getting pulled over for a ticket. I got pulled over for a ticket two times. Both times... The cops came and said, oh, shit, Superboy, what are you doing talking on your phone? I'm going to give you a ticket, but I'm going to let you go this time, Superboy. Oh, fuck, Superboy, what are you doing making that right turn? You know there's no right on red in in New York. This ain't California. I'm going to let you go. So yesterday, four, I don't know what kind of cops they were, but they were high-end. You know they're always high-end cops if they're in a suit and tie. I always feel like those are the ones not to fuck with. They let me and my friend Toby into the, into the special area. Okay, let's just call it the special area. So I go into the special area, and of course, once you're in the special area, you got to get into the more special area. And that's a whole long thing. We're literally jumping fences. Not, 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 not like high fences, but like, you know, we're hurling them, we're going through them. There's chicken wire fences. We, we're, we're doing all that shit. And the reason why is because we came to see the roots. We missed them. No disrespect. You guys hooked me up. Amir, Zara from The Roots fucking got me the passes. But I, I was late, okay? I was fucking late. And then there was some country singer. I don't know who it was. Garth Brooks or some Sh- Sh- Shina Twain. I don't know. It was some country singer. Some girl. I don't know. No one gave a shit. To be honest, you're in New York. Listen, nobody gives a fucking shit. I know it was a, a worldwide global event and you got to have audiences, different eclectic. That's right. I said eclectic, you know, acts to appease the masses. But in New York, no one gives a fuck about the country singer. Some big country singer. I don't know who she was. She was big. It wasn't Willie Nelson. It wasn't uh, Loretta Lynn. It was, uh, I don't know who the fuck it was. It wasn't uh, those other girls. I don't know. It was, uh, I don't know who it was. Some blonde chick could give a shit. Me, I could give a shit. You know, I, I just, I don't know. But uh, anyway, I came to see, no doubt, who I like. And I've always had a crush on this Gwen Stefani. She's like under the radar, sort of. Just her consistency year after year after year. Number one, she hasn't aged. She looks the same as she did when she first came out. Let's just say 20 years ago, No Doubt came out. I couldn't even name you five No Doubt songs. I couldn't even name you five No Doubt songs. But fucking Gwen Stefani, there's just, this is the thing about Gwen Stefani. She looks fantastic and she seems sweet. She seems nice. She seems genuine. She has trumped the aging process. She's got to be 40, 41. She looks fucking great. She's dope on stage. She minds her business. She's not a little chicken head getting caught up in, in, in gossip and all that stuff. She's got kids, I think, with that with the British guy. Oh, I met him too. He's fucking nice. They're just nice people, and she's dope. So by the time the fucking No Doubt gets on stage, somehow or another, I don't know how exactly it happened, I wind up with my friend Toby and our boy 
in the front of the front of the fucking front. I'm literally right in the front of the fu- like I could fucking like if I was crazy, I could go up on stage and and stick my tongue down Gwen Stefani's throat and 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 then fucking walk off the stage and, and go back down to my seat and and uh you know, drink my water. Okay, cuz I never got the Arnold Palmer that I was looking for. I I got a bottle of water, but we were that fucking close. All right, I'm like, holy shit, we're at the front to the front to the front. No doubts on stage. Gwen Stefani. Let me tell you something. Like I said, I, I can't even name no, five No Doubt songs, but I'm a fan. She's sick. The bass player, guitar player, I, I can never tell the difference. Tony, sick. They're sick. They're like the fucking Rolling Stones. She's as great on stage as Mick Jagger was in his prime and still is fantastic. Mick Jagger's like 94. He shits on most front men and most bands. She has that kind of energy of a young Mick Jagger in his prime. And she's like 40 and she's a girl. She's wearing like, you know, girly clothes. She wear, she barely sweats. I don't know how the fuck she does it. She's jumping around. She's doing the chicken dance. She's fucking swinging around, flipping like Mary Lou Rhett and shit. Barely sweating and just killing it. The crowd's going nuts. The only part, some girl behind us was like, you motherfucker. I don't know how you got there, but I've been waiting here all day. I pay a lot of money for these seats. You better not stand up, you motherfucker. I said, listen, sweetheart, I'm going to sit down, but I'll fucking stand up if I want. All right, don't be fresh. It wasn't really the way the conversation went, but that was what the conversation was in my head. But she did call me and my friend Toby a motherfucker and told us not to get up. And we didn't get up. I said, it's all right. I'm in the front of the front. I don't need to get up. I could sit down and watch it. You're fucking standing, sweetheart. I'm in the front of the motherfucking front. Like, you know, like that commercial must be in the front row. I was a must be in the front row. That was the reality of the situation. So she kills it for about, I don't know, 35, 45 minutes. Now, I know it's a concert for charity, and I know it's televised live on, I don't know, Fox or CSNBC or NBC or ESPN. I don't know where the fuck this thing was televised. So in between each act, oh, you got, like, this person coming out and that person coming out. And it was cool. Like, Nelson Mandela's grandson was there. But then, like, Nelson Mandela's grandson's friend spoke, and then, you know, like, a a friend, a guy that knew Gandhi he spoke, and then another guy that knew, you know, I don't fucking know, Martin Luther King, he had coffee with him, he spoke, and everybody's speaking, and they're talking about, you know, helping the world, which is great, but they're talking and 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 talking. And I, you know, I, 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 I'm, a, I'm a Jew, okay? I'm a 44-year-old Jew, and my body starts to hurt. So I'm doing my stretches. Like, when I go out, and, and I stretch. I don't give a fuck where I am. I need to stretch. So I'm sitting on the floor. I'm doing, like, a downward dog. People are looking at me like I'm crazy. I need to stretch. My, my back is starting to hurt. And we're all there for the biggest of the biggest of the biggest act, motherfucking Jay-Z which is re- the reason why I'm doing this special podcast is because of Jay-Z. So finally the light, you know, the, 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 the night starts to fall, beautiful night, wearing just a t-shirt and shorts. And you hear Frank Sinatra, dun, 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 dun. And you know, the lights are going down. And I think you hear another Frank Sinatra song and I don't know. Liza Minnelli, I think, came out on stage. No one gives a fuck. We're waiting to see Hova. Hova, Hova, Hova. We are waiting to see Jay-Z. And then the music for, I think, I don't remember exactly how I did it, but the music for his you know, biggest song, New York with Alicia Keys, that starts to come in. And then Jay-Z comes out. And let me tell you something about fucking Jay-Z. We talk about Mick Jagger. We talk about Gwen Stefani. Jay-Z is by far the biggest music... I'm not going to say rock star because he's obviously hip-hop. He's the biggest music, musical presence we have right now. Nobody is fucking bigger than Jay-Z. On stage, this fucking guy... Jay-Z is like Fonzie. If you're, if you're a Jay-Z fan, you know what I'm talking about. If you're not a Jay-Z fan, 
which our friend, my friend Toby, our other friend, Brian, I call him Fly Bry, he's not even a Jay-Z fan. He's like a fucking hardcore punk fan. He's agnostic front and alkaline trio and sick of it all and all this shit, H2O and all this shit that I don't give a fuck about. Okay, I know it's great. It's just not my thing. He, he's not even a Jay-Z fan. As soon as Jay-Z comes out, he's like, holy fucking shit. Jay-Z comes out, he's wearing all black everything. That's what he wears. He's wearing a hoodie, a black t-shirt, black jeans, no jewelry. The crowd is losing their fucking mind. And this is not a hip-hop crowd. I've seen him perform before where he puts the microphone down. And I know other acts do this shit. And the crowd will do the entire song. And he'll sort of be mouthing the words. He'll put the microphone down and they'll do big pimping. The whole crowd will do every word. 15-year-old kids, 44-year-old kids, people a little older than me, white, black, Chinese, gays, lesbians, fucking Chinese people, fucking Puerto Ricans, Haitians, Indians, Croatians, everybody's going fucking crazy for Jay-Z. And he doesn't have a dancer up there. There's no fucking bells and whistles. He's got a screen in the background. That's the only thing he has. He's got a screen in the background. You know, we're doing some cool video shit. This fucking guy is literally like Fonzie. He's the coolest motherfucker on the planet. Jay-Z is the coolest, chillest. Talk about gangster. Talk about swag. Talk about all these variables, these adjectives, these pronouns. Jay-Z's all of them. He goes through his set, 99 Problems. I don't remember. He fucking everything. He goes through all the songs. The fucking crowd is losing their mind. And he, he's not doing anything crazy. Gwen Stefani, fantastic performer. She's jumping around. She's doing gymnastics. She's, you see that? That's New York. You hear that in the background? I'm by my window. That's New York. Anyway, she's doing like CrossFit on the stage. And it's great. I'm not saying... They're taking anything away from No Doubt and Mick Jagger, that sort of Mick Jagger performance that, 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 that No Doubt and Gwen Stefani do, because I love it. It's fantastic. But the fact that Jay-Z can go on the stage and just do his shit, not that he's not trying or he doesn't care, that's just his style, and, and like he doesn't need all the bells and whistles. He's that cool and that good, and his songs... I was trying to figure out, like, why are people going crazy? And he's just chilling. People are going crazy because the songs are so good. And, and, and somehow it hit a spirit. It, 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 there's, there's, it, it goes into your spirit. And you just get so excited to see him. And he's so huge. And he's so famous. And he's so good. And his song making is so good that when he performs, the work is already done. The work is done in the studio by Jay-Z. So he does all, all the hits. He does 99 Proms. He does New York. He starts a song with uh, New York. Motherfuckers are losing their shit. I'm losing my... I'm literally losing my shit. I'm swinging a fucking towel around. I'm doing the fucking... The diamond sign. Uh, I'm going crazy. I'm, I'm going fucking crazy. He's like, yo, New York. Uh, uh, he's like... He's doing his... And then fucking... Beyonce comes out, and motherfuckers go double time into, into a whole other zone. Now, I love that Jay-Z is married to Beyonce, and I fucking respect the shit out of Beyonce, but I'm just not a, a huge Beyonce fan. I love a couple of songs, you da 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 put a ring on it, but da ba da ba da ba da ba put a ring on it, that shit's good. You know, I, I know them. But I, I, I just don't listen to them unless I hear them. You know, I like that, uh-oh, 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 the booty shaking song. I love that shit. I love surfboard, surfboard, that shit. Yeah, I mean, but it's just not my thing. She comes out, the fucking crowd goes nuts. You know, there's all these rumors about, are they breaking up? Are they not breaking up? They're not fucking breaking up. Number one, if they were breaking up, why the fuck would she come out on stage for free? This wasn't even a show I think that people got paid for. They're just, they're not breaking up. Okay, so leave that shit alone. And, and, and why would you want to break up such a good fucking thing? 
the two of them are perfect for each other. And on stage, it's like, I don't know who the dynamic duos of music are. I don't know. Sonny and Cher, maybe. Who is that? They're good. Sonny and Cher were good. Eric B. and Rakim. Uh, fucking, uh, I don't know, Q-Tip and Fife. What the fuck? I don't know. Like the two, uh, two, two man crews, men and women. I don't know. Donnie and Marie. They're better than all of them. Jay-Z and Beyonce shit all over Donnie and Marie. Donnie and Marie ain't shit compared to Jay-Z and Beyonce. So she comes out. She was breaking it the fuck down. All right? She's dancing. She's got fucking high heels. She's doing like, you know, booty shaking. See, I I have so much respect for Jay-Z that I'm not even going to say ass shaking. I'm not even going to say like stripper moves because they're not. Because it's Beyonce. It's like she's classy. She could sing. She looks good. Jay-Z, sometimes, while she was performing, even he's like, oh, shit, I can't even believe this is my wife. You could see it in his eyes. The fucking crowd goes nuts. I'm like, oh, shit, there's Beyonce. It's the first time I've ever seen her perform. I've never seen her perform live with Jay-Z. And then she leaves. The crowd goes nuts. She's sweating. She she just, she had some sort of low-cut white shirt on and I'm not going to say tits because it's Jay-Z's wife but her boobies were flopping all over the place she's just perfect she's just great she goes off the stage Jay-Z comes back out sings more songs rhymes his shit he's killing it crowd is going fucking nuts and that was it that was it that was the end of the show and the reason he has to go last You cannot follow Jay-Z. I don't know another act that could follow Jay-Z. Maybe Coldplay, maybe? I don't know. Uh, I don't know music. I don't know all all the bands. But I don't know what other band is is, is that could follow Jay-Z. Now, today, in 2014, who's another band, performer, solo act, two-man crew? Who the fuck could follow Jay-Z? Anywhere. And this is not a hip-hop crowd. Okay, let's let it be known. This is not a hip-hop crowd. This is an everybody crowd. Everybody's fucking there. I don't know who could go on after what he did. He shut the motherfucking shit down. The motherfucker is like, he's like Fonzie. It's literally like the Fonz, the coolest motherfucker. He turns the lights on. He turns the lights off. He, could make, he makes it happen. And it was just a great night. And then I had to stretch. I had to stretch because after the show, my body was hurting. Okay, so then I went, you know, into a little patch of grass. I did my stretching. I did my downward dog. My friend Toby and, and, and Brian, they're like, what the fuck are you doing? You're stretching in public. People are walking by and, and looking at you like you're I don't care. My back hurts, motherfucker. I'm going to stretch wherever the fuck I want to stretch. My kids, they call me the street stretcher. They're humiliated by it. I will throw my leg on the top of a mailbox. I don't give a fuck. In the middle of the day, anywhere. Anytime I get out of my car, I stretch. And let me tell you something about my stretching ability. I grew up playing basketball. I was never the fastest. I was never the best on any fucking team. I was never the quickest. I was never the most, uh, uh, the best player. I was never the, 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 the highest jumper. I was never the best shooter, although I was a pretty goddamn good shooter. I've been the best passer on teams. Skill, an acquired skill. But I've always been the most flexible. And I say, you know what? You can't be the best at everything, but you got to be the best at something. And I was, and I always will be, the best stretcher. When I go to CrossFit, whole other conversation. I wish I could videotape and keep you podcast people in the loop of what I look like in CrossFit. If, I ever, if things ever get bad and I need to do a reality show, that will be my reality show. Michael Rappaport does CrossFit. It is a fucking shameful, shameful, humiliating experience to watch me do CrossFit. But I do it. I do it. Anyway, so I stretched it out. We walked home. Everybody's walking the streets of New York. Everybody's happy. People are, you know, singing, dancing, you know. I'm stretching. I go had uh, some vegan uh, food. My friend Toby's a vegan freak. So we went to some place called the Candle Cafe on East 79th Street. I had some 
tofu this and tofu that and some soy pasta and some fucking phony meatballs. I had pasta and meatballs. None of it was pasta and meatballs. It was like, I don't know, cardboard and, you know, soy. But apparently it's healthy. So that was it, man. It was just a great night. The Global Citizens Charity Concert in New York. And I, I just wanted to just talk about Jay-Z and how fucking sick he is on stage. And, 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 and Beyonce, she broke it the fuck down. And I'm, you know, she did a move, man. She did some kind of shit, man. It's some Olympic shit she did. She, like, did an up and down, then she squatted. I mean, she's probably really good in CrossFit. She did a jump and a squat, and I'm telling you, she had on heels like it was fucking nothing. If I had to do a squat or half of the fucking things that Beyonce had to do during that concert in boots, let's just say Timberland boots with, with, with sweat socks. Let's say I was in a sweatsuit and boots, and I tried to do what Beyonce did on stage last night. I'd be in the hospital. I would have torn meniscus, ACLs, MCLs. I'd break shit. All, it would all happen in one thing. She's like a fucking rubber band. You know, she does it all. In heels. I don't know, Louboutins or what kind of heels she has. The Red Bottoms, Giorgio Armani, Gucci, some kind of fancy shit because it's Beyonce. They probably like custom. I don't know what the fuck they are. Anyway, it was a great New York night. This is the I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast. I am Michael Rappaport. I'm so glad you guys are listening to this uh, this shit. But uh, I, I think this podcast is good. You know, I think this is fun. And this is a special, special Global Citizens New York City Central Park concert review of the Beyonce Jay-Z show opened up by Gwen Stefani, and before them, some country singer. still can't figure out who the fuck it is. I don't know who it was. But it was great. It was a great night. And, uh, you know, I'm glad to have have been a part of it. And uh, like I said, yo, listen, I don't care if you could give two shits about hip-hop music. If you like music in general, you need to see Jay-Z. You need to see Jay-Z live. And and even if you don't like hip-hop, even if you don't like rap music... Watch this fucking guy on stage. You've you never seen anything like it. You've never seen anything fucking like it. He's just fantastic. He's great. He's the best. He's the best ever. He's the GOAT. He's the, he, he, he's the, the greatest of all time when it comes to hip-hop. He just is. His body of work. We get into all the, 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 the details of why Jay-Z is the greatest of all time on, on a whole Jay-Z podcast, you know, talking about his whole career. But, but he is the best. He just, he just, he's, he's super, superseded what all the dreams and the ideas of, of what a rapper wanted to do in the 80s, like a Big Daddy Kane, an Eric B and Rakim, uh, EPMD, uh, Biz Markey, uh, Melly Mel, uh, Cool Mo D, all the ideas, LL Cool J, he surpassed everybody. He, he pushed the dream past the dream into some euphoric, you know, rainbow heaven place. Like he surpassed what anybody would have ever imagined, even him. I, I, I've heard him say this, even him. No one could have ever imagined that, that a guy like Jay-Z, or, or just a, and I'm saying a guy like Jay-Z, a rapper, would become the biggest fucking music star in the world. He is the biggest. He's the best. Period. Sure, you could say this one or that one. Fuck that. Jay-Z's the biggest, the best. It's crazy. And that he's a hip-hop, pure hip-hop. There ain't nothing pop about Jay-Z. Even when he makes pop songs, he's, he's from the lineage that hip-hop, he has Cool Herc in him. He has Grandmaster Flash in him. He's from, he's first generation. Although he's a little bit younger than the first of the first generations, he was inspired by all that fly, Cool Herc, Africa Bambada. He's, you know, 45, 46. He has that in him. No one would have thought that he would headline the Global Citizens concert 20 years ago, that he'd be bigger than No Doubt, that he'd be bigger than that fucking country singer that I can't even remember who it was, that he could go anywhere in the world and shut shit down. No one would ever have ever predicted that a rapper, any rapper, would ever have done that. And I just think it's fucking great for hip-hop. And I just can't tell you how impressed I was with that shit last night. 
This is Michael Rappaport. This is the I Am Rappaport podcast. And we're signing off with some good, funky shit right here. Thank you for listening.